<laughs> Welcome to the grand return of how to be friends with Dave and Sean. Hi, Sean. Hi, Dave. How you doing, young man? I'm okay. How are you? Um, good. Uh, this is, of course, our celebratory birthday cake background because of the grand return. We have a lot to catch up on. And for any of you who rejoin us, I appreciate you coming back. Yes, all 12 of you. Quite you. And you should consider continuing rocking because you look like you're either about to start a horror movie or about to narrate some Stephen King short story. Incidentally, I guess the same thing. My office chair is on its way out and it squeaks way too much. So I just put the glider rocker here so we didn't have a bunch of crappy background noise. <laughs> A good call. Okay, we've got a lot to catch up on. Uh, first, I guess an explanation. Um, so yeah, it, it was <laughs> it was internet issues. Uh, I had to move, and I'm happy to report to everyone that there is another option. Um, before we we, I mean, people generally only thought that cable was the only real internet option that was out there, and we we all hate it. Comcast. If you're listening, you're not that far past those days that people had more customer satisfaction with the IRS than you. That was the thing. That was real. Uh, when people talk about, you know, <laughs> it's time. when people talk about like, oh, DSL, yeah, it, DSL was legit. I used it for a while, but it was not quite as good. Uh, and then satellite internet was only for people who generally lived in tornado alley that's yes yeah, satellite everything has always been the worst however comma uh i guess this week's sponsor is brought to you by t-mobile home internet which is actually really impressive i'm paying 50 bucks a month and i get like 150 megabits and it runs off of cell towers so yeah i mean what's so what's your ping right now Oh, ooh, can I share my screen for that? You, you know, you as my fans might see my notes here, so don't cheat because I'm just doing this just to pull up. Ew, multimedia present. I'm I'm so bad with technology. Oh, I, April Ross and uh, infrastructure bill. I'm gonna stop that. Okay, um, for those of you who want to test your internet, don't bother with speedtest.net go to speedof.me okay it's just a little bit more specific because it actually shows you the performance of your internet you're seeing the peaks and valleys and so forth instead of a little dial on speedtest.net we get this advertisement out of the way yeah i was gonna say that ad is blocking wow it really just doesn't want to go away there we go Credit karma. My credit took a crap, by the way. That's one of the things we need to talk about. We'll get, get to credit. how credit is affected by different life events. Yeah, well, yes, yes, and no. Okay, so there you get after everything's said and done, we're running at about 23, 24. Um, yikes, with other hey, hey. Well, I mean, it's it, that's fast getting on DSL for a wireless box. That's not bad. Uh, my download is 182, right. and yeah. my latent my latency though is 46. So, so that's not see. Bad. And now, as soon as okay, you did so that, now on, the... now on my end, you're all pixelated. <laughs> as soon as you ran a speed oh. test, it like ate up all oh. all your streaming capability. Probably I need to turn. This is I'm I'm back. And I'm, if you I'm had an OnlyFans, I would not suggest utilizing T-Mobile's home hotspot. Although for sixty dollars a month, fifty dollars plus an actual monthly ten dollar fee, and that's only applicable if you use auto pay. It's a really good yeah. option, considering that gigabit 
is going to for new customers under Cox be like a hundred bucks a month, and they cap you. Oh. I want to say at one point two five terabyte, which is a great point because and then it's ten dollars doing... for every fifty gig block after that. Yeah, which is ridiculous. And just to give you an idea about okay, so the Sutherlands, those of us, we typically do everything via the internet because I don't want to pay for Google, excuse me, for, for cable TV. It's just unnecessarily expensive. And for those of you looking for a value on things, how many channels do you honestly watch on cable? Four? Yeah. Five? You're better off ordering those a la carte. Like HBO Max, for example, you're better off just getting that than cable with HBO. Let me get back to the point. Um, so we were running on a puck, like one of those mobile internet things just so I could get my school work done. And the maximum they offer that for that is like a hundred gigs. And we were scraping, like no one was watching streaming really. Um, the kids, if they wanted to watch shows, it was only on their tablets to limit it. Like I was running through my everything and we burnt through a hundred gigs in like three weeks. If you've got people gaming, streaming shows, you can get to that terabyte. Easy. Yeah, but absolutely. Let's so yes. And I was a busy man. Um I I for for the benefit of my fans, of course, there's and by my fans I mean of the 12 of us that watch, um, maybe two of you like me more than Sean. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know if that's true because the the let's play I uploaded, I still think only has four views. Hi, mom and dad. Hi. <laughs> that's the two. Hi, Get Mr. Back. and Mrs. Sutherland. Hi, that's Colonel Sutherland to you. I'm not. I'm not in the military <laughs> anymore. Just, it's I'm Colonel not. Sutherland to you, smartass. I'm a civilian. That's correct. That's correct. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so. Yeah, so uh, it's been a super busy, uh, like, like six weeks, because of course, um, for those of you who do or don't know, I've had this interesting custody battle going on, that interesting custody battle um, included like all of a sudden uh, being a full-time dad, poof. And so like, let me explain. I was heartbroken because I found that my kids were going to Ohio and I can't talk too much about it because it's an active court case and everything. Suffice to say that there was a surprise that this the suit to move the kids away came up and it was granted bah, immediately. And like I had a date that the kids were going to be gone. And um, so because it's the summer, the idea was that they were going to be gone. They were going to come back for a while then they'd be gone and I would have to go in and meet them, right? And then there was a, a sudden change Oof. Like the day that they were supposed to be gone, they were here for like six weeks. I hadn't even moved into this palatial party house that you see behind me. This is actually what I did with my house when I moved into it. Like these guys, they're they're my movers. Oh, I like, like it. it's like an epi it's like an episode of Gumball going on in the background. It, it is. I, I'll go ahead and just just mix it. Just I, I, I that's still, better. Just, yeah, it's yeah. it's distracting um so i have internet i'm i'm settled in um my kids are unfortunately off to another place uh be catching up with them but so that brings me back a little extra time to share with you and our dozens of fans dozen of fans is that wait a second is that wheat grass behind you i don't know because i get that stuff sometimes and it's terrible Every yeah, what? Time... yeah so you can mix it in with your protein shake it tastes like a freshly mowed lawn it really does it's like it's like licking a lawnmower blade yes so we have a couple of things um to cover um i don't know this is some interesting stuff to talk about okay sean yes does BLM have any power in Nevada? I, we have a Bureau of Land Management. Bingo. Okay. Wow. Good call. 
I brought up BLM specifically just to see if you'd fall into that interesting trap. You didn't. Oh, I, no, I actually didn't catch on to what you were saying until just then. You're talking about <laughs> Black Lives Matter, right? I am talking okay. actually about... Okay, so for generally speaking, anyone on the East Coast or even in the Eastern part of the Midwest really doesn't think much about Bureau land management. Out here in the West, it's for real. Yeah, they, they manage the land. Not just a little bit of land, like hundreds, like a, like a lot. millions of, of square miles of land. The United States is huge, and the Bureau of Land Management is actually one of the more powerful government agencies in a government that is constantly expanding power. So, I'm not going to go into all of the news of it. I just learned recently that the, the person that is being appointed to head up the Bureau of Land Management in between creaking chairs defended... It's a, good, it's a good mic, though, isn't it? It's it a is damn, a good mic. It's a damn good mic, because um, I didn't hear the creaking chair. <laughs> um, the pure person nominated to head up the Bureau of Land Management defended eco-terrorists in the 90s, which was a big deal. You remember Greenpeace? Sure. I think they mattered for a little while. For like five minutes, because they were actually doing eco-terrorism. In this case, the group that she was defending something very interesting in spiking the trees of a forest in idaho have you heard of that before spiking trees i have but i don't know what it entails so it's it's interesting what what happened was this person who may end up heading up the bureau of land management wrote a letter defending these eco-terrorists and this this letter was to warn this lumber company that was going to go in and cut down this forest as lumber companies are want to do right yeah this okay so because the spikes ruin the blades right now it's kind of coming back it it's okay you are much more mechanically oriented than i am when we're talking industrial level saws hitting like a two pound spike in a tree right. what happens that it, it turns into a bullet yeah, but also most of those saws are only only working with wood, so you immediately destroy the blades on it, and those saw yeah. blades are extremely high cost. Yes, so that would just be interesting. I thought that was a fascinating form of, like, protest that they were actually trying to injure lumberjacks, who universally are liked. Nobody really has a poor outlook on num lumberjacks. Anyway, we're going to see what happens with that. But let's get back to a point. This is relevant right, right now. Sean? Yes. The mRNA vaccine? The Myrna? Yeah. Is doing exactly what it was advertised to do. Act as a vaccine. It... To be clear, to be clear, and I want to make this point to everyone who's freaking out, the mRNA vaccine was never really meant to prevent you from getting coronavirus. Okay, yeah. Because, of course, it was to teach your body to attack the spike proteins in the coronavirus, right? you're gonna you're gonna have to tackle this from a much dumber approach i'm aware of how vaccines work but your listeners might not be okay so it is important to state that general awareness the johnson and johnson vaccine works the way a vaccine is supposed to work meaning that they take an attenuated virus and well excuse me they take a virus and they attenuate it they mean meaning weaken it or kill it leaving enough proteins there sufficient that you develop antibodies against it, and therefore your body is designed to attack it. Now, the mRNA vaccine, which was moved ahead um, by Project Warp Speed and so forth, was specifically designed because they needed to move fast. It was designed instead to attack the proteins on the coronavirus that make you sick. So the idea was that you could get the virus, your body would be able to fight it off 
more effectively and you should not be able to spread it, but of course it's all new and not FDA approved. I know, very exciting, but let me get to the point. So we have the spread of the Delta variant, right? Correct. Have you seen what death rates are doing? They seem to be going up from what I last saw. No, they're going down. In some cases they've gone up very slightly, but compared to the case rate, which is like equal to or greater than what it was at the peak for a short period of time here, st like statistically, people are not dying from the coronavirus anymore, period, hard stop. Statistically speaking, because people are, are going to think about the anecdotes, well, I have a cousin who died, and I'm sorry, I, again, I'm sorry, but the reason I'm saying this, calm down, the mRNA vaccine is doing exactly what it was supposed to do. It's helping us fight off the vaccine. Excuse me, the virus. Who is saying that the vaccine wasn't doing what it's supposed to do? Uh, the people that now want vaccinated people to wear masks. Right. Are they saying the vaccine's not doing what it's supposed to do because people who were vaccinated were getting sick? Is that their argument? The argument is that it's not effective against the Delta variant. The argument is that we may need a third booster shot. The argument is that people want more control. Honestly, that's, it isn't an argument at that point. It's just, we, we are effectively past, we're past coronavirus. We're past it. It actually has now a, less, a lesser death rate than the flu. It still spreads more than the flu. I'm not diminishing that, but it now has a lesser death rate than the flu. Is that CDC-based information, or where are you getting that data? Oh, let's let's pull it up right here, and I'll show y'all how to do it. Don't don't look at my notes again, people. Let's let's do this. A window right here. Now, uh, y'all are allowed to make fun of me for using Bing. My screen will share. Okay. You go to your little browser, and I like to go coronavirus daily numbers graph Washington. Okay, I'll show you yeah. how to do your math this month yourself. Okay, so it, let's hit a nice peak. And by the way, you can check the sources on this. These sources are aggregated from the CDC, the WHO, the EDC, Wikipedia, which isn't great, but the New York Times, and additional points. Okay, so there's your yeah. references, right? So let's go to a nice peak seven day average right here on the okay. 25th. We need to go back to the, pardon me, we need to go back about two weeks, right? So we need to go back to the 11th, right? Okay, new confirmed cases in Washington, seven day average 561, okay? Okay. Take your little booty, go up to deaths, right? Go to your current seven day average right here, right? As of like the present time, three. Simple math. Anyone can do this. Three. If it'll click. Three. Oh, it's not coming up. But anyway, there we are. Three divided by, what did we say? 561. A point zero zero five percent Your actual percent is a half a percent fatality rate. Okay. The flu is at a 1%. The flu has a 1%. Okay. And coronavirus in the state of Washington is at half a percent. Okay. Can you, can you click, you can choose states there, huh? Yeah. So let's go to Nevada. Yeah. Let's see how Nevada's doing. Okay. All right. Not a whole lot going on. You had a spike that went all the way up to a 14 seven day average. Okay. So that was on the 28th, right? Right. So that means we need to go back to infections. Uh, what would it that been? The 14th. Okay. A little bit higher in Nevada. Seven day average, 712. You see that? Yeah. So same thing. What do we have? 14 divided by 712. 
Okay, so in this case, that is twice as lethal as the flu. Okay. It's the flu. In Washington, half as lethal. In Florida, excuse me, Florida, Nevada, uh, twice as lethal. We're rounding off. Go to the United States as a whole. I mean, this is a substantial pike, a spike. I don't want to diminish the fact that, yeah, this Delta variant, it's spreading. But mm -hmm. again, you know, seven day average, 105,000 new cases in the United States. That's a huge number of cases. It's massive. Deaths. So not, as, just to kind of bring it back here, what's mm -hmm. your point that you're trying to make? Because it's, it, it's lost on me. To bring it all back together, uh -huh. we thought the, really the Johnson & Johnson vaccine was the one that was, get out of here, was the one that, um, wow, these are all my, my school notes. Um, what the hell did you just show in the conversation between you and me? Okay, it was the Google Meets. All that right. was all the links, yeah. All right. Yeah, you just keep keep putting all your information out there. <laughs> I'm sorry. So yeah, the point is, of course, that the attenuated vaccine, the Johnson and Johnson vaccine, is is supposed to work such as a vaccine does. A um, the mRNA vaccine was supposed to keep you from having serious adverse effects, and everyone, it is doing exactly what it was supposed to. So is the problem we're having now because we have vaccine holdouts or? No. Um, the problem is that everyone wants to lock down again. And there's zero reason to do that. Lockdowns weren't effective in the first place. They want to send kids back to school with masks on, which is stupid because kids already were very strong against it. Um, it's, it's, it's just, it's now the virus that we just have to live with. It's no longer a problem. Unless you're under the age of 12. And even if you're under, and that's part of the, the thing that bothered me all along, is if you're 12 years old and you choose not to get the vaccine, mm -hmm. okay, because all of the data shows that anyone under the age of 20 is extremely resistant to the virus. And always has been. And it, it's... To be fair, to be middle ground about this, because we honestly should be middle ground about this, it goes both ways. This argument, these statistics, the statistical reality will be argued by anecdotes. I know this kid who got sick and died. I know this person who got sick and died. Anecdotes are stats. But on the flip side, I'm also not completing, completely poo-pooing the virus, or the vaccines. I'm actually making the distinction of, of the two different vaccines. Johnson & Johnson, actual vaccine. mRNA, doing its job, not quite the same kind of vaccine, okay? So the people who are like, well, don't get the vaccine because there was this side effect. Once again, anecdotal. The statistical side effects of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine are nothing. Nothing. Right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go past your middle ground there and just say that everybody should just be getting the vaccine. And to parse it, you're correct. Everyone should get the vaccine. No one should be compelled. Make sense? I mean, if by compelled, you sure. I, I, I guess it makes sense to you. I don't know. Um, well, bring your case. What? Why would you choose not to do something that doesn't have a downside? You have it is not FDA approved. Okay, neither are most of the crap that people buy at the store and put in their body on a regular basis. What does FDA approval have anything to do with? No, you're correct. I'm just saying outright, it takes me no time flat to say why a person could have a reasonable objection. It is a reasonable objection to say that I don't want a vaccine that has not been through thorough testing. And lest we forget, now I wasn't wants... arguing reasonable objections. You were telling me. Yeah. You were asking me, and I asked you, yes. what is the downside to it? A reasonable objection that is not FDA approved. 
What is the downside that we have seen with the vaccine thus far? Good and fair question. And of course, we don't have a clear downside. Right. That's why I was able to agree with you and say you should get it, but no one should be compelled. So, okay. Makes sense? I agree. I think people should be compelled by common sense and doing research on their own. But unfortunately, I think for the most people, people are compelled by news media. Yes. <sighs> yes. That's all right. And it, thank it, God the FDA approved the polio vaccine or all these kids yeah. would be walking around on arm crutches. My friend. Because it's not FDA approved. My friend. Do you know what happened with the initial rollout of the polio vaccine? like nobody got it did they <laughs> was it another situation where everybody was scared of the government shot no people were told okay and this is a good comparison because of course okay people at the beginning of the coronavirus were like like they started masking before the government told them to they started distancing before the government to told them to because there was a lot of people seeing actual things happen, like people actually getting sick. Right. is isn't making sense because people aren't seeing it. I, I had, there was a, a, a classmate in my class, for example, who got sick with the coronavirus and didn't even know he had it. He just tested right. Didn't even know he had it. Uh-huh. Polio was, everyone was 100% on board with it because, of course, they saw what it was doing to people. They saw that it was killing people. Um, the 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 plague, for example, when it rocked through Egypt, <laughs> Egypt excuse me, when it rocked through Europe. <laughs> you you just biblical plagued yourself. That was awesome. I just took that right to <laughs> Old Testament. That was fantastic. <laughs> the old angry God who hits people with rats with the plague and gives kids polio. <laughs> So, so people were so <laughs> were so desperate for a vaccine of some kind for you know they, they for immunity of some kind that they were actually injecting people with sick people's blood in order to try to pass antibodies. Hey, you know what? The idea was there. The idea was there. They were so close. Polio. Was they the had same it. Thing. Yes, polio. It was killing people polio was crippling people so when the vaccine came out there was no vaccine hesitancy zero and there was a batch of polio vaccine that was polio yeah well that that just straight up well, straight up that's just, just like <laughs> man sometimes but i will i will counter the fda approval with yeah. two words Yes. Accutane, uh -huh. thalidomide. And I will just say, because a medication is tested and tested and tested and approved by your government, that also should not immediately make you trust it. <laughs> did you watch the commercial before you did this video? Uh, no. I First of all, I took Accutane. Okay. okay, and I know exactly what the side effects of Accutane are. And in health sciences, we had to study thalidomide. Uh huh. So, I, I, I'm um, just saying, I, counter argument. The government, I, you know, no, I, no, 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 I think yes. here that the vaccine has very few side effects, and in those instances, they're minor compared to actually getting a disease that could possibly jack you up or kill you right. but my argument is not that every fda approved medication on the on the you know you should trust it no no most of them have bad side effects um uh blood thinner which 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 blood thinner is it all of them oh no i can't remember are we talking about a, a, a heparin are we talking about a warfarin are we talking about warfarin Warf yes, warfarin will okay. mess you up. And where did warfarin get its? Where did warfarin originate? Oh, you hit me on this one because I've studied it, but I don't know the origin. Yeah, it was it was rat poison. 
Oh. <laughs> and it killed Wait. rats because it thinned their blood out and they internally bled. And we were like, wow. That's not bad. That's that not might bad. work good for human beings. And, and to be fair, okay, th this, this is the Dr. Drew Pinsky point of drugs. Drugs are neither good nor bad, but have a specific purpose within a specific therapeutic range for a specific reason. So yes, you give a human being lethal levels of warfarin, the exact same thing will happen to them that happens to rats. Yes. Uh, if you give them a, a very carefully selected therapeutic range, well, then you can help prevent another myocardial infarction. Uh, interestingly, just for the fun of it, just for those of you who are following the medicine, do you know what the antidote for warfarin is? Oh, I can't remember what it was. No. Vitamin K. Is that what it is? Yeah, it, it remove vitamin K is involved in your um your thrombolytic cascade. And so warfarin basically takes that out of the equation. When you add it back into the equation, you start clotting. I just remember that when we had patients with warfarin, we had to actually get a, a clotting test. <laughs> and then mm -hmm. it was like, sorry, we're not going to be able to help you today. Because if we poke you with this needle, the chances are you will never stop bleeding. Yes. Yeah. Uh, PTINR, all of that stuff. I got I to gotta keep learning about all of this stuff. And it's it, making me absolutely nuts. Absolutely. Bonkers. But I mean, just to come back. Yeah. FDA, non-FDA vaccine yes what it all comes down to is the answer is cbd oil uh okay and before i forget again it's funny that you should bring up accutane because that's what i posted on this channel the commercial for my college of accutane if you haven't watched it we we make a hilarious point of how it will screw you up it, yeah it, and i don't i didn't i didn't actually have to watch your video Mainly yeah. because I had taken it. But when I took Accutane during uh -huh. the short period of time, it was approved. <laughs> and shortly before people started killing themselves, uh -huh. um, on the front of the package of Accutane was a picture of a fetus with a circle and a line through it. And then you'd open the package of Accutane and then there were more pictures of fetuses with a circle and a line through it. And for each individual pill on the package, there was a tiny circle and a line through a fetus. Uh -huh. You don't get to do the dirty <laughs> while taking Accutane, male or female. Yeah, it was Correct. it was that bad. They were like, no, you will take Accutane, pass it on to your partner through sexual intercourse and cause a birth defect. And you're like, well, the FDA approved it. <laughs> Right. In fact, in the nursing implications, they say use not one, but two forms of contraception while you're taking Accutane. You wrap it and you take the pill. You you get a vasectomy and you get your tubes tied. Don't yes. mess around. Ridiculous. Okay. Are they still giving Accutane to people? So, I mean, that was in a, a, one of our list of drugs to do a commercial on. And so maybe... It's it's the devil. We we have refined it to the point of saying that it is only indicated for people with pernicious acne to the point that it's painful, scarring, interfering with your life kind of stuff. Like right. you get to the point where your acne is going to make you kill yourself or Accutane is going to make you kill yourself and you decide which one you want to try to not kill yourself through. Here is how bad I should have known Accutane was. The doctor took a look at my back, said, okay, I have one option for you, wrote the prescription, and then he, he gave me, not the office number, mm -hmm. he gave me his personal cell phone number, and he said, you will call me if you feel in any way aggressive or upset or suicidal. Mm -hmm. That should have been an indicator when your primary care provider's like, here's my cell phone number. My personal cell phone. My personal cell phone number. That should have been an indicator that that stuff was bad news. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. It's the devil.
We're gonna do a hard shift here. Just for a bit. <laughs> okay. What are we? What are we getting on to? Because I do have a little bit of local news, and I want your take on a couple of things. Okay. okay. Did you read any of the news that I put in the notes for this week? No, I didn't even. No. Good. Yet, good. Good. No. Okay. You haven't done notes in so long. I don't even check anymore. Don't. Don't. Don't judge me. Don't. I'm not. I don't. Okay. I just want you to read the headline, okay? And give me your immediate reaction. Here we go. Coming up, hopefully. A white woman from Oregon is getting called out for claiming to improve Kongi. <laughs> Business owner Karen Taylor says she aimed to sell westernized Kongi that is delicious and doesn't seem foreign. <laughs> I don't even know what Kongi is. Is that Vietnamese? <laughs> So I, I okay. Uh, uh, <laughs> is it Thai? What is it? I, I, and, and it's in. It, it's been like a week or two since I read this because I prepared for the great return. Um, and I, I don't remember what original ethnicity it is. It, and, and again, point is, it's not Karen ethnicity. Okay, someone who's a fan message us. Tell us about your Kongi experiences. But <laughs> of course, here's, here's the paragraph that matters. Over the weekend, Twitter user Casey Ho tweeted a thread of screenshots from the company's website in which the company markets its Kongi at delight the Western palate. <sighs> Taylor wrote, I spent a lot of time modernizing the Western palate, making a Kongi you can eat and find delicious that doesn't seem foreign. I spent 20 years trying all different combinations, find really tasty, healthy ones that work in our modern world. That may, that's the, that is the most entitled white bullshit I have ever heard. Correct. That is good. I'm glad they ate her alive online. And rightly so. Yeah. Let me be clear. All right. And this is a good example of how we've got to get rational in this modern world. Okay. If you're a couple of Karens, I'm just going to say it. If you're a couple of Karens and you decide to open a taco stand in Oregon and your tacos are good and you're like, buy our tacos, no one should, no one should try to shut you down because of cultural appropriation. If you make good tacos, I don't care who you are. Is that fair? Yeah, I agree. But if they're trying to make tacos that don't seem foreign, and they're like, we're going to knock the Mexican out of these tacos <laughs> so, that, so that white people can eat a taco without worrying about eating the same food <laughs> that brown people eat. It is, that is like the most racist shit. Why would you? Oh, yeah. I, it's just. You hit it on the nose. Sean hit it perfectly because it's true. <laughs> if you want to make your own, I think you could have. You, you have to tread lightly trying to change any ethnic food because first off, you're losing your credibility as a chef if you can't make an authentic ethnic meal. Right. But, if you think, well, I'm going to do it better this way. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I get like if you're using if somebody's like, here's the thing, this this appears to be a way to prepare this thing. Like uh -huh. if you told me I made tofu this way, I wouldn't mm -hmm. be like, well, you've offended the entire right. culture of tofu. Like I, I get that. But yeah, mm -hmm. when you're like, I'm going to take the blank out of tofu so that the western palate can enjoy it it's 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 right. just yeah that is just dumb which is a reminder once again if you guys didn't know it's important to know because portland oregon purports it is such a woke city again here's your evidence that portland is one of the whitest metropolitan cities in the country it really is. Portland is so far up its own butt. Okay. That they've lost touch with reality. 
local, local, local once again. Uh, I, of course, actually live in the city of Vancouver, okay? Yes. And I kind of want to get... Okay, so we've got... Let's do a little yay or nay on things, okay? And I'm going to share this for you again, okay? And um, so what we're talking about is Vancouver police getting... Um, a little bit woke with stuff. Okay. So this is this rolled out as of July 23rd, okay? Uh-huh. Let's start with the top. Okay. Prohib prohibiting the use of chokeholds. Yay or nay? Nay. Okay, so do not allow chokeholds. Is that what you're saying? Or allow them? No, I'm saying allow chokeholds and neck restraint. Oh, great. Okay. Expand. Because I would purposely rather put hands on you than have to kill you yes i don't want to have to draw my sidearm because somebody was like oh you're not allowed to choke him and then my only option is to put a bullet in you correct when you take away chokeholds and neck restraints not only do you i mean you know when's the last time somebody died in mma um Right. Okay, but what you're doing is you're completely offsetting the force continuum, which they have been doing for years. You cannot re... You are supposed to be able to respond in a like manner without escalating a force continuum. So if somebody pushes, you push back. If somebody knocks you to the ground, you knock back. That's mm -hmm. the whole point of the force continuum. But when you take chokehold neck restraints out, you're inadvertently creating an extra an extra level to response on the force continuum. Mm -hmm. So basically what you're saying is if your suspect decides to go hands-on, you're mm -hmm. taking the only reliable method of restraining them and throwing it mm -hmm. out the window. 100%. Which means he's going to start fighting for my weapon and I'm going to put rounds in him. I agree. Okay. Okay. Let's bring this to a solid point. Sean, you're pushing against six foot three, right? I'm five foot seven, okay? Right. I'm not going to win a fight with you by punching you. I'm not. No, if, you're, you're not. You're going to have to get in close and grapple. Right. Right. 100%. Yeah. Now, I'm right now five foot seven and a buck, 40, a buck 75, excuse me. Have you known any police officers smaller than me? Um, no, not really. I mean, I mean I've, the, I've met they a couple. exist. Cut it out with I, that. No, I mean, I've I've met a couple, but you're talking usually you're talking about female officers, uh, right? I I know I'm a little guy. I'm not I'm not insulted by the fact that you're usually only female. You got you got that Joe Rogan five eight size going. <laughs> See that? Anyways, let's get back to the point. I'm a female officer in a fight. If she is not allowed to choke hold, it is in a bad way. She's in a bad way. Yes, anybody in a fight who is not allowed to put somebody in a chokehold is in a bad way. And, and and so to the point, I've been in fights, lost some, won some. The ones that I've won, guess how I've won them? Yeah, you, you choked them out. No, yes. And in the case of a chokehold, it is 100% go to sleep, you're asleep, fight's done. Right. You, how, how many people did you accidentally kill? Zero. Oh, okay. So to clarify, yeah. so to clarify, yes. once again, instead of training people to do things properly, we're just going to tell them that they can't do it anymore. Correct. Okay. No knock warrants. Officer may not seek, and a court may not issue a search warrant, arrest warrant, granting an express exception to the requirement for the officer to provide notice of his or her office to the purpose when executing warrants. I don't think you should. No I don't think you should prohibit a no knock, but I do think you need to make the requirements for a no knock much higher. Ooh, that's good. Yes. Yeah. Okay, I agree. All right. Prohibit the use of tear gas except in three circumstances. Harm posed by a riot barricaded subject. Yeah. Prior to deploying tear gas, law enforcement officer must exhaust available and appropriate. Yeah. Okay. Announce the intent to use to yes, and allow uh -huh. sufficient time or space for the subjects to comply. Yeah, which it always should have been. Prior to <laughs> deploying, the law enforcement agency also receives authorization from the highest elected official, kiss my ass, of the jurisdiction <laughs> in which the tear gas is to be used. Okay. 
tear gas does not include OC spray. Cool. Oh, that's good. Yeah. So All you right. Just, yeah. Um, tie this. I'm. I actually want to tie this real quick back to your previous comment. This is not banning tear gas, but it is raising the bar for justifying the use. Which, in fairness, it should have been this to begin with. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So I agree. All right. Prohibit the use or acquisition, excuse me, wow, of military equipment. You can skip past that because that is such an open-ended wording. It doesn't uh -huh. mean anything. Yes. Continue to utilize 40 millimeter less, although they are above the 50 caliber prohibition, right? Uh -huh. Yeah, well, that makes sense. Okay, next. Let me just say one thing about that. Because of what you're saying, I've seen several Vancouver Police Department officers with a combat application tourniquet right there on their vest. Right, which would technically be military equipment. And that right. is a life-saving piece of equipment. Right, that's why that wording is completely stupid. Uh -huh. Now, if you were saying prohibits the use or acquisition of secondhand military surplus, at least now we're kind of starting to narrow it down. Mm -hmm. yep. Because I'm assuming they don't want people driving around in armored up Humvees because it scares people. Correct. And okay. that's Humvees suck anyway. I, I don't want taxpayer dollars spent maintaining those things. Requires uniform peace officers are reasonably identifiable. Yeah, should have been that way. Yeah, okay. if, if yes, that shouldn't be a uh -huh. uh, let's Vehicular see pursuit and prohibits a vehicular pursuit unless the officer has probable cause that a crime has is committed and a reasonable t suspicion of driving under the influence necessary for the purposes of identifying or apprehending the person poses an imminent threat to the safety of others, and the officer receives authorization to engage in the pursuit from a supervising officer. Um, I do agree with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, someone's speeding? Yeah, you're in the end. If they choose not to pull over, you're putting the public at a higher risk of continuing to pursue them. Mm -hmm. Because what they will eventually do is stop and slow down. But as far as Deweys go, they should be allowed to pursue them because they pose a risk regardless because of their inebriated state. So, yeah, I, I'm with that. Yeah, I think it's police in Tokyo. They actually shoot your car with paintballs so that later on they can identify it. Oh, that's clever. Yeah. But, of course, that makes the good point as well that you should get the license plate. You should, you know, call ahead that license plate. You you should have capacity to be able to at least follow up. Granted, there's a, always the defense, well, unless you can actually identify who was driving it. But the point is there are reciprocal things. Um, so, yeah, I kind of agree with this one. Okay. Uh, VPD use of force addresses states a peace officer may not fire a weapon upon a moving vehicle unless necessary to protect against imminent threat of serious physical harm resulting from the operator's or passenger's use of a deadly weapon. For the purposes of the subsection, a vehicle is not considered a deadly weapon unless the operator is using a vehicle as a deadly weapon. I don't agree with that. It also violates some current Supreme Court standings mm -hmm. that shooting a fleeing suspect in order to protect the public at large is actually legal. Yes. So that one doesn't make sense to me because those two, those two conflict with each other. Yep. So... Um, yes. I'm in a car and I have a gun, but I'm not aiming it at you. Right. Yeah, and no. that's the, the big argument. Police have to be very careful in general if there's a justification to fire at a moving vehicle um, for a variety of... I of think that's very... Uh, yeah, and that's always been uh -huh. understood uh by most police departments that you take a risk. You can't see in a vehicle in a lot of cases. Mm -hmm. Now, if you performed a traffic stop and you've looked in the vehicle and you know the situation, that's one thing. But I would not randomly start throwing rounds into the back of a minivan and right. unknowingly hit a three-year-old who's, you know, in a child's seat in the third row. Mm. So, well, yeah, there's always a risk to that. It, it, right. It, the nature of a vehicle is that things are, are spinning, moving. Things are hard. Things are soft. Uh, a bullet hits a, a vehicle, it will go God knows where. 
There's, yeah, it'll stop or go through. But yeah, I'm not. I think that's that's unclear on that use of force policy. Right. It's not. So, and of course, in this case, I, it would not surprise me if things get litigated in that later. Okay. A couple of other quick things because we got to wrap this up real quick. Um, all right. Uh, witnesses. Okay, use of force to address the, any identifiable uh, witnesses. Another peace officer engaged or attempting to engage in the use of excessive force against another person shall intervene. Yeah, that's the way it's always should have been. So I'm it, glad they put that one in there. Right. If if someone is beating the dog snot out of someone, it's your job to stop. Also, if you lack the moral compass to do that on your own, you shouldn't be in you should not civil be. service. Mm-hmm. Uh, any identifiable on-duty police officer who witnesses any wrongdoing committed by another police police officer, um, good faith, reasonable that committed wrong, they'll they'll report it. You, yeah, that it is should have already been in the policy manual for right. BPD. Sorry, guys, you're about forty years too late. Right. Uh, let's see. The personnel must provide or facilitate first aid, such as rendered at the earliest safe opportunity. To injured persons at a scene controlled by law enforcement or when a person is injured during the use of force incident yeah so uh, it, yeah absolutely right that's it, not it, yes without question yeah uh let's see a vpd employee may use physical force against a person when necessary to protect against criminal conduct where there's probable cause to make an get arrest okay good effect an arrest Prevent an escape as defined under chapter, etc. Okay. Protect against an imminent threat of bodily injury to the police officer, another person, or person against whom force is being used. Were these additions or are these just slight changes? Because that should have been in their policy manual from day one. This is um, a lot of these were additions. Uh. A lot of these were clarifications. I can't tell you which. I've had my issues with Vancouver police. It would not surprise me if these weren't always, if these are new, it wouldn't surprise me, honestly. Yeah. That's... Okay. Last one here when using physical force, least amount of physical force necessary to overcome resistance. Yeah. Include consideration of the characteristic condition of the person. Okay. And that can go both ways as well. Yeah. Um, that should also mean, again, Let's take five foot seven, 175 David Sutherland as a police officer up against six foot three, 230 pound Sean as a, a criminal. More force should be justified by me. Yeah, agreed. Because of the size disparity. Right. Let's see. Da, 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 ba, 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 force is determining appropriate least amount of force. Blah, blah, blah. Manage the peace, increase the distance, blah, blah, blah. Okay, good. I appreciate your expertise in this. I'm using this as an example of any time any laws come through that need to be voted on, okay? Read the whole damn thing. And if you're not 100% sure about it, vote it down. That'll give them a chance to refine it and bring it up again. Yeah. So don't let your search and rescue teams buy that military equipment that normally costs thousands of dollars. They could get it at a discount. Don't, don't buy a Humvee. For the, anyone out there listening to this who thinks that Humvees are cool, they're not. They're garbage. They're terrible. They're absolutely atrocious. Okay. Lowest bitter garbage vehicles. I know. Oh, we have a guest. Sure. Yeah, go ahead. That one? What? what? Get... Can I have one? No, Keith was asking if he could play his VR. Oh, okay. Well, That's we were all. wrapping up anyway. Um, you still didn't allow me to amway you into some CBD oil. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, real quick. Real quick. What are you? Are you two weeks into the CBD? Yes. And 30 second, good or bad? It's 
incredibly hard to tell the difference of whether you are or not using CBD oil. <laughs> so if it's free, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Don't <laughs> don't pay what I paid for it for the purpose yeah. of an experiment. Buy a big um, bottle of ibuprofen at Costco and you're good to go. Sean, I am glad to be back on the podcast again with you. I hope people come back again. Um, I, I have we didn't get back to the credit stuff. We didn't get back to all sorts of other things. We'll be catching that back up again next week. Yeah, we'll pick a day for next week. I don't know what it's going to look like, but we'll find a day. So thank you again, homie. Don't ever shave your face again. It's gross. I love it. <laughs> Have yourself a wonderful night. Love you, buddy. Love you too, bud. Bye. Bye. Oh, now it's just me. Ooh, spooky, spooky. <laughs>